1993, way before PlayStation and Xbox, there were only two major consoles competing neck and neck in a two-man horse race for domination of the biggest game company, and more important, your wallet. But in a heated, uncontested battle during 1993, which one will come out on top, David or Goliath? 16-bit arcade graphics. Super Nintendo was obviously the go-to gaming console thanks to their Mario and Zelda imprints, but also their newest introduction, Star Fox, an innovative shooter that was the first to utilize polygons, giving the player a three-dimensional experience never seen on any 16-bit console. Now, how could Sega, Nintendo's main competitor, top that? Simple, innovation, and quality. The iconic Japanese gaming company adhered to the old rules of necessity as the mother of invention. By them, along with a few third-party publishers, strategically utilizing the make use of methods to push the envelope if not push Nintendo off the number one spot. Case in point, these are the games which prove how the Sega Genesis held their own and at times bested Nintendo's 16-bit behemoth. Gunstar Heroes. Despite its cartoony aesthetics, Gunstar Heroes is a spiritual successor to Konami's Contra, thanks to its run and gun gameplay, along with bizarre bosses, innovative stages, an eclectic soundtrack, and vibrant graphics. One of the game's standout features was its revolutionary weapon system, enabling players to combine different types of firearms to, to create an astonishing array of deadly combinations. Players could opt for rapid fire laser shots, flamethrowers, homing projectiles, or even unconventional combinations such as lightning flaming bullets. This innovative approach to weaponry added a layer of strategy and experimentation to the gameplay, thus encouraging players to find their preferred playstyle. Although a sequel never happened, it's all for the best. As with Citizen Kane, Gunstar Heroes is cemented as a one-shot classic. Gunstar Heroes not only solidified Treasure's reputation as a pioneering game developer, but also left an indelible mark within the gaming industry itself. Ranger X Ranger X is a side-scroller that was developed by Gao Entertainment and published by Sega for the Sega Genesis console which was released in Japan under the title x Ranza, and was later released in North America and Europe after the name Ranger X, where players in the role of the titular character dons a powerful exosuit that is capable of flight via jetpack with a wide array of weapons and abilities. The game features 2D side-scrolling gameplay with immersive graphics that push the limits of the Genesis processing power. One of the most unique aspects of Ranger X is the game's innovative gameplay where you can separate the giant mecha from the X up, which is an all-terrain cyber cycle. Ranger X implements tactical gameplay during combat where the cycle is capable of firing lasers independently while the armor or mech can recover energy via light source. Developer Gal created custom software tools that allow the team to push the hardware capabilities of the Mega Drive slash Genesis to its limit without the need of having any add-ons such as the Sega CD or the infamous 32X. The soundtrack adds more of a futuristic flair for this hidden gem which I believe came out around the same time as Super Nintendo's Cybernator. Yet, for a mech title, Ranger X adds a fresh coat of new paint for the subgenre. Overall, this game was praised for its graphics, which was considered one of the best from the Mega Drive slash Sega Genesis, and remains a classic example of the side-scrolling action genre thanks to its innovative use of engaging gameplay that demonstrates how Sega's console can easily measure up to the more powerful SNES. Shinobi 3 
Personally, I've been a fan of the Shinobi games since Revenge of Shinobi, which was my introduction to the Sega Genesis console, and with Shinobi 3, which is a direct sequel of Revenge of Shinobi, Joe Musashi returns once again to stop the criminal syndicate Neo Z from World Conquest. This third installment of the Genesis franchise features a variety of different levels, each with its own set of obstacles and enemies to overcome. The levels are beautifully designed and offer a diverse range of environments, including jets surfing in the ocean, horseback riding in the forest, or infiltrating an elevating weapons base. One of the key features of Shinobi 3 is its fast-paced gameplay, where you must constantly be on the move using Joe's ninja abilities to dodge enemy attacks, transverse across certain levels while taking down your enemies with a variety of skills that range from slashing, tossing shurikens, a jumping dive kick, and a running slash that's fucking awesome. These include the abilities to run up walls, long jump long distances, and perform powerful attacks that can take out multiple enemies at once. Prior to Sega's announcement of a new Shinobi game in the works, Shinobi 3 was the last from the Genesis console and arguably one of the best side-scrollers, if not the best side-scroller from 1993. Excellent. Robocop vs. Terminator Developed by Virgin Games, Robocop vs. Terminator is an action-packed video game released for the Sega Genesis as well as the Super Nintendo in 1993, where the game pits two popular sci-fi franchises against each other as with the comic book adaptation, where players are taking control of Robocop and battling against Skynet and of course the Terminators. Although the game was also released for the Super Nintendo, the graphics and gameplay was inferior compared to Sega's version which was programmed by David Perry's engine. Not to mention the game loosened restrictions and made it more of an R-rated experience as in a code that can unlock gory kill effects. The Genesis version also had better graphics and a much better soundtrack. Mazen Saga As far as hidden gems are concerned, Mazen Saga is an exceptional side-scrolling game that first released in 1993 for the Sega Genesis. The game is based on Gonagai's anime and manga series Mazinga Z, which was popular in Japan in the 1970s and 1980s. However, instead of being control of a giant mech, your character wears an armor, aka the armor of God, to fight against powerful bio beasts led by God Kaiser Hell. <laughs> Funny name. After completing each stage, you are faced against a giant boss, and this is where the game really shines thanks to its fluid motion, graphics, and sound effects, backed by a menacing techno-esque soundtrack. Although it can be dismissed as yet another side-scroller, Mazen Saiga has a unique concept and gameplay that stands out as a defining niche and definitely worth checking out. Mortal Kombat And this is where Sega really managed to outpace Nintendo during the legendary console wars. During a fierce competition between the two gaming giants, Nintendo dominated the market with its family-friendly games while Sega was still struggling to find its footing. However, everything changed when Mortal Kombat, a fighting game that featured realistic violence and graphic imagery, was released for both consoles in 1993. The main reason why Mortal Kombat was so important to Sega Genesis was because it gave the console an edgier image that was lacking in other gaming systems due to Sega loosening the belt when it came to restriction of violent content. This was a crucial deciding factor that helped Sega to stand out from its competition and open the door for future games that featured mature content, while as Super Nintendo don't remove the gory content in order to preserve their family-friendly image. Sega was quick to develop their own fighting game franchise, Eternal Champions, to capitalize off the Mortal Kombat phenomenon. And although Mortal Kombat played a significant role in saving Sega Genesis from oblivion, there was a spark of backlash from the Senate committee when Senators Herbert Cole and Joseph Lieberman deemed the game too violent, 
for children and called both Sega and Nintendo on the carpet. Sega was a catalyst to the video game rating system, giving players and parents the option to purchase or not to purchase games that are rated MA as in mature audiences. The ratings board allowed developers and publishers more creative freedom that would eventually lead to more adult-oriented content such as Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Fable, Mass Effect, Dead Space, Doom, and so forth. Sega's image under the vision of CEO Tom Kalinske at the time helped the company stand out from its competition, which not only proved to be a turning point for Sega, but set the precedent for future games that pushed the boundaries and imaginations of what was possible within the video game industry. So, overall, Genesis did what Nintendo don't. 